Hi, this is Irene from the University of Calgary. Um, in this module, I'm covering the basic technique of identifying for intraperitoneal free fluid. I have no disclosures to declare. In uh, assessing for intraabdominal free fluid, we can use the same technique that uh, many of you may have heard of called FAST, which stands for Focus Assessment of Sonography for Trauma. It's an examination technique initially developed for trauma patients. And um, in this examination, what they do is essentially do a number of views, starting with the uh, right upper quadrant, uh, left upper quadrant, as well as the pelvic views to look for intraabdominal free fluid, which in the setting of trauma, we're really looking for bleeding. Um, and um, now, for all intents and purposes, I'm not covering the subcyphoid view, uh, which primarily is there to look for um, fluid around the heart, and because we're this module is concentrating on intraabdominal free fluid, we're only covering these three views in the right upper, left upper quadrant, and then the uh, pelvic view. Now, um, this technique is equally useful for non-trauma patients, and um, at least on the medical ward, it's not uncommon that we're looking for the presence of ascites using similar techniques. Um, what we do is we start out in the right upper quadrant with the transducer marking marker pointing towards the patient's head. What you're doing is obtaining a coronal view, um, which essentially you're trying to make a slice uh, of the liver like so, and um, making a cross section here with the coronal section. And because the transducer marker is typically pointing towards the head, and the um, pro, the, the screen mark, marker is on the left-hand side of the screen, like so, um, which is pointing towards the patient's head. Essentially, it's almost like you're looking from behind the patient, um, and this is the view that you would get. You have the liver here, the kidney here, and the spine over here, with the diaphragm kind of closely hugging the liver. Um, and that's what an ultrasound image would look like. And just to label that for you, you've got your liver, you've got your kidney. Um, this area here is the hepatorenal space, which is often called the Morrison's pouch. Um, spine over here, just uh, beneath the organs, and then you have your diaphragm up there. So where would fluid hide out? Um, one of the more sensitive spots for fluid to accumulate is actually at the tip of the liver. Um, and that's um, right here. Uh, Morrison's pouch is another area where fluid can accumulate. You should also look at the inferior pole of the kidney as well as above the liver, um, just beneath the diaphragm. Um, because it is a 3D structure, um, having just performing one slice is insensitive. So you really should try to sweep through or fan through the entire area in the right upper quadrant. Um, make sure that you kind of cover from anterior to posterior and back up through anteriorly just to make sure that you interrogate through the entire hepatorenal um, space uh, and all the structures around that. So here's what a sweep through uh, of that region might look like. You've got your liver here and then you're sweeping through the kidney and then you get a good view of the uh, tip of the liver um, through that whole uh, 3D structure. And um, here's a clip of what a positive scan might look like. And here's a patient with a, um, cirrhosis and fairly shrunken liver. And a fair amount of ascites all around that uh, area. And you've got your kidney right here. In the left upper quadrant, the technique is relatively similar. Um, so what you do is point a transducer marker towards the patient's head again. And in essence, you're making a slice. Um, like so. Sorry, let's just go back there for a sec. You're making a slice right there. And then as you spin that around, what you have here, you've you got your spleen, your kidney, and your spine, and you're going to rotate that through just so that it corresponds to how an ultrasound image might look with, a, with the uh, screen marker on the left hand side. And that's what this might look like. And we'll just label that here. You've got your spleen, you've got your kidney, your spine down below, and then the diaphragm. In, in fact, it looks remarkably similar to the uh, right upper quadrant view. With the, so instead of this 
the liver you have the spleen on this side here now in the left upper quadrant. So where would fluid hide out? Um, above the spleen, at the spleen tip, and also inferior pole of the kidney. Interestingly, you, you don't actually get, uh, unlike the case in the right upper quadrant, you don't actually get a lot of fluid accumulation that commonly between the, uh, the spleen and the kidney, primarily because of the ligaments within the abdomen. Here's what a sweep through would look like. You want to you do the same technique when you interrogate through the entire structure anteriorly to posteriorly just to make sure that you really truly interrogate through the space properly. Um, here's a clip of a positive scan where you actually do see some fluid here and here above the, uh, the spleen just beneath the diaphragm here. It hasn't swept through to the inferior pole. I suspect that might be positive as well, too. For the last view at the uh, pelvic region, what you want to do is put a put your transducer with the probe marker towards the patient's right, just above the pubic symphysis. Um, and you do want to peek down a little bit towards the feet because the bladder, which is a structure right here, is um, behind the pubic symphysis behind the bones here, so you might not be able to see that unless you actually angulate your transducer. Once you obtain a view, you want to sweep through the entire bladder from front all the way through to the back. And once you've done so, uh, go to go and obtain a longitudinal view of the same structure of the bladder with the transducer marker towards the patient's head. Now this view is a little bit more sensitive um, in picking up smaller amount of fluid than in the transverse view, so it's definitely important to do both views. Um, I do like doing both, and I usually start out with the transverse just because it's easier to identify the bladder that way, um, and then move on to the uh, longitudinal once I've done that. So once you've identified the longitudinal view, you do want to make sure you peek down again towards the feet so that you can actually find the structure here. And um, you want to sweep through the bladder side to side. Okay, so here is what a sweep through would look like on a transverse view. And you can basically trans do that, um, interrogate through the whole bladder. Um, these areas here on a for a male patient, those are seminal vesicles, not to be mistaken for fluid. And a longitudinal view, that's what that would look like. The bladder's a bit more triangular in shape now. And you sweep through the bladder side to side. So where would fluid hide out? So here's a transverse view. It tends to be in the rectal uh, fascicular space, which is uh, just behind the bladder, posterior to the bladder. And in a longitudinal view, you can kind of it's a it can kind of come up to a bit more superior to the bladder and behind the bladder, but uh, again in the rectal fascicular area. Here's a positive scan where you can see the bladder right here, and you can see free fluid surrounding and uh, right there. For a female, the um, fluid tends not to accumulate just posterior to the bladder. Instead, it tends to accumulate in the pouch of Douglas, which is the rectal uterine recess. So you've got your uterus here and bowel behind it. So that's kind of for a longitudinal view here. That's where the fluid might accumulate. Whereas in a transverse view, you've got your bladder, your uterus, and fluid tends to accumulate behind the uterus. So the take-home messages for this video, we didn't talk too much about interpretation and some of the pitfalls, um, but uh, essentially in covering the technique of doing, looking for intra-abdominal free fluid, um, useful to use the FAST te technique where you cover the right upper quadrant, the left upper quadrant, and the two views in the pelvis. Make sure that uh, in the upper quadrants that you're sweeping through the hepatorenal and the splenorenal space, respectively. Um, and then in the pelvic view, make, through, make sure that you sweep through the entire bladder. Um, thanks for tuning in. Uh, feel free to let me know if you have any questions. Um, all our videos are uploaded on the Calgary IMUS website. Um, so if you Google Calgary IMUS, which stands for Internal Medicine Ultrasound, um, you can find our site and uh, we have additional tutorials there. Thanks again for tuning in.